Great, thank you. Um, I also want to extend my welcome to everyone. We're really excited to have you here, um, to have our NHGRI colleagues as well as NIH colleagues here and people who are watching on webcast. We're very excited about this workshop and looking forward to the discussions over the next day and a half. Um, Eric actually covered a lot of the points that I um, wanted to make, and um, so I hope we can go through this fairly quickly and catch up a little bit um, on time. So I wanted to go over a little bit uh, more uh, about the purpose of the workshop and background about ENCODE and a little bit more detail about the planning process for the future. So um, as Eric mentioned, ENCODE is ending um, in uh, this current phase is ending in 2016. And so we really wanted to bring together the community to get input on what HGRI should support in the area of functional genomics that does build on the success of ENCODE. And so uh, I think Eric made this point already, but I think it's worthwhile repeating is that functional genomics really is central to realizing NHGRI's uh, goals. We know that non-coding DNA is important for disease and gene regulation. We know that about 90% of GWAS findings lie outside of protein coding regions. We know that non-coding DNA variants are, uh, can cause human diseases and alter human traits. And about 80% of recent adaptation signatures lie outside of protein coding regions. So we feel that comprehensive functional information about the human genome is really critically needed for the interpretation of genomes, understanding genetic variation, and applying genomics to the clinic. A little bit uh, more background about ENCODE. Um, that workshop was July of 2002, actually, um, which is about a year before we had um, the next st the strategic plan that came out with the completion of the human genome sequence. So the goal is to compile a comprehensive encyclopedia of sequence features in the human genome and in the genomes of model organisms, and to make the resource freely available to the community to enhance our understanding of the regulation of gene expression and the genetic basis of disease. Um, this slide um, shows the, the timeline for ENCODE. As Eric mentioned, we started with the pilot project, just focused on 1 percent of the human genome um, in 2003. And at the same time, we initiated the first of a series of technology development efforts. Um, we felt that technology development was really a critical part of what we needed in order to meet the goals of ENCODE. Um, then based on the success of the pilot project, back in 2007, we launched the first production phase. Um, and that was um, when, when we went from 1 percent to 100 percent of the genome, um, focused on human. And then at the same time, we started the Mod and Code project, which was focused on uh, creating a, um, a resource of functional elements in the C. elegans and Drosophila melanogaster genomes. And those ran, ran concurrent um, from 2007 to 2012. And then in 2009, with some money from the economic stimulus, um, we were able to launch a modest effort in mouse and code that also went through um, 2012. So as we were nearly, nearing the completion of 2000, uh, these projects in 2012, we recognized that we still had a long way to go in completing the catalogs, and so we initiated the ENCODE Phase 3, which we're in right now. We started in 2012, ending in 2016. Um, that was focused specifically on human and on mouse. Um, and then we also funded a number of computational analysis awards because we felt that um, we really needed to bring a lot of expertise to the, um, the question of how we're going to be able to interpret all of this data and un understand it. And also in 2012, we, we launched the, um, the fourth uh, initiative in technology development. Um, just very brief uh, overview of the ENCODE data slides. I think Mike um, Snyder is going to go into this maybe in a little bit more detail. So in this is a cartoon that shows that ENCODE employs a series of high throughput technologies that are primarily sequence based to measure a number of different biochemical um, uh, signatures in the genome, including transcription, uh, DNA methylation, histone modifications, DNA hypersensitivity. And the data that is coming from um, those assays are used to map genes and transcripts and identify candidate promoters and long-range re regulatory elements such as enhancers. This slide outlines the structure, current structure of ENCODE, um, which is uh, a fairly heavily managed uh, consortium. We have a number of data production groups, and they deposit their data into the data coordination center, which does quality um, evaluation, uniform processing. It stores the data and makes it available to the community. The data is then taken up by the analysis working group, which is supported by a data analysis center. And uh, they generate gene models, chromatin states, and identify candidate elements that really comprise this encyclopedia. The computational analysis groups work together with the, um, the uh, analysis working group, um, and the technology development groups are, are generating uh, or, or exploring um, 
obtaining information about how, how to um, find new function elements, how to validate them, and how to, how to analyze the data. So I just want to highlight a couple of the features of, of um, consortium. As, as Eric said, this is how we run this program and some other programs. This is one model. There are, are a number um, of them. The um, consortium is really highly collaborative and has synergistic efforts that benefits by a lot of exchange of, of information and ideas within the group. There's a mix of investigator-initiated and top-down directed projects. As I mentioned, there's focus management coordination. For example, the data production groups have quantitative milestones, and we bug people for um, quarterly reports on um, progress towards those milestones. Um, this generation of high-quality data, I think Mike's going to touch on this a little bit more. They use cost-effective and high-throughput methods, and I think what's key here is really being able to take advantage of the economies of scale. Um, this is a focus on the resource uh, generation for the community, and we work to actually balance the needs of the individual re uh, researchers, allowing them to publish on their own data, but also getting the data out very rapidly to the community. And we've been developing uh, data standards in common data formats and using common cell types in some cases to facilitate data integration and analysis. And this also provides transparency about data experiments and data quality. I just want to give a few highlights of um, ENCODE accomplishments. Again, Mike's going to go into this in more detail, but I thought it was important to um, uh, recognize a few of these at a higher level. Um, there is a rapid release of um, oh, thousands of experiments. These are, again, as I mentioned, high quality and well documented. They're uniformly processed, and these processing pipelines are available on the cloud. We developed and disseminated out analysis tools. And actually, the, um, the Data Coordination Center has been uh, taking the lead in data interoperability and developing. Um, working with other projects uh, to create, to, to work with um, common um, uh, metadata standards so that the data from different projects can be um, understood well um, from one, one to the other. Uh, ENCODE has updated and informed consent language for open access to genomic data, um, and we are working to obtain um, samples with this consent to, so that data is out and not, not put behind. Um, uh, in DB gap or and so people can get access to the raw data. There have been a series of publications, and we're most gratified to see that the data has been used by the research community in over 700 publications, which is probably an underestimate because it's hard for us to track all this. Um, and these publications include disease studies that help identify causal variants. So as Eric mentioned, um, ENCODE is not the only project that we support in functional genomics. NHGRI also supports um, genomics gene regulation and FUNVAR. The NIH Common Fund supports epigenomics as well as the GTEx and COMP projects, um, and the, um, the management of GTEx and COMP also um, are housed at NHGRI, and there are international projects such as the International Human Epigenomics Consortium, and Mike uh, Pazin, Mike Snyder, and uh, Dan Gilchrist are going to tell you more about these a little bit later today. So I think we've been through this with, I'll just briefly mention the uh, objectives are of the workshop are to discuss the scientific questions and opportunities for better understanding genomic function and applying that knowledge to basic biological questions and disease through, through large-scale genomics efforts and considering what projects that NHGRI should support in this area. When we have these discussions, we want you um, to consider a couple of points. Um, so the, the main areas of discussion are going to be on continued data generation, how NHGRI can enable basic biology and disease studies for the, really the rest of the world to be um, conducting, and underlying all of this, I think, will be discussions about technology development. We're looking for bold new ideas that NHGRI can catalyze. Um, just a word of caution, we're, we're looking for fairly general advice at high level. We don't want very detailed advice, so we don't want to put anybody in conflict for future funding opportunities. And again, think about what, um, what is appropriate for NHGRI versus other funding um, institutes and agencies. Um, as Eric mentioned, NHGRI has a long history of supporting resource generation and dissemination, technology development, implementation of new genomics technologies and approaches. We do um, support a lot of research consortia when a high-level coordination and staff involvement is appropriate, but as Eric mentioned, we have you know, various models um, for this, which has varying degrees of coordination and management. And we also do support investigator-initiated research as well as training and um, SBIRs. We want to give a brief overview of the framework of the agenda to um, 
uh, get everybody oriented. We're going to start with some introductory talks to set the stage. Um, first talk from you and Bernie about defining the scientific challenges. Then we're going to hear about these series of, of related projects. Then we're going to hear two proposals for future directions. One is the current ENCODE PI's vision for functional genomics, as well as recommendations from the sequencing workshop that Eric mentioned, specifically on integrating genomic variant discovery with genome function. And these are really just ideas that the community has already put forward that really are, are just starting points for um, for today's and, um, discussion today and tomorrow. Then we've organized really the rest of the agenda focus on these three topics. The first is on identifying and characterizing functional elements. The second is on using genomic assays of function to interpret the role of genetic variants in disease. And the third is on using genomic assays of function to study basic biological questions. And we do recognize there's going to be some overlap in these discussions, and that's fine. We want to see where, where these intersections are. And we also want to see what's unique for each of, of, um, of these topics. Um, you should have gotten a handout for the t discussion questions for topics one through three. If we don't, we'll, we'll, there should be more at the registration desk. I'm not going to go into these, but we've established eight um, questions that are going to be used by the moderators to um, help frame this, this discussion. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to have um, an overall discussion on looking at cross-cutting ideas, what are uh, all the different um, ideas that people have for programs, what the priorities are, and what might the balance of activities be. So um, the next steps, we're in the middle of the, um, the planning process right now. We have in this planning workshop, and then as Eric mentioned, we're going to be taking one or more concept clearances to be reviewed at the May Advisory Council. And then depending upon that, the outcome of that discussion, we'll have potential funding opportunities to be released in this, this coming summer of 2015 with review and funding in 2016. And we do actually have four council members here, um, Eric Borowinkle, Carol Bolt, uh, Joe Ecker, and Jay Shinduri. And so um, they will be able to represent um, these discussions at the, at the council meeting um, as well. Okay, uh, I think Eric already went through this, so uh, we, the organizing committee, um, uh, he's already thanked him. I will also add my thanks, as well as thanks to um, Sandra Romberg from Capital Consulting Corporation, um, the ENCODE Consortium, of co course. Um, this is a picture from last year's um, consortium meeting. It's about 180 people, and uh, this Saturday we're going to have um, this year's um, meeting, and I tell you, it won't look quite this nice. It'll be out on Long Island, and uh, we're just hoping there's not going to be a lot, too much snow on, on the ground. And uh, Eric mentioned the, the ENCODE external consultants panel, uh, Eric Borwinkle, David Kingsley, Dan Appier, Paul Sternberg, and Ola Troinskaya, and everyone except, I believe, David is going to be here um, uh, at, the, at the workshop. And then a final thanks to NHGRI staff, uh, my colleagues working in ENCODE, Mike Pazin and Dan Gilchrist, um, Adam Felsenfeld from the Large Scale Sequencing Program, and uh, Division Director Jeff Schlosser have really been um, very helpful in organizing this workshop as well as our, our program analysts, Hannah Naughton, and especially shout out to Julie Corson, who has taken the lead in organizing this, um, this workshop for us. Um, finally, I hate ending on such a uh, mundane note, but we do have a number of housekeeping items to mention. Uh, reminder, we are webcasting this, so please use the mics, which um, Eric reminded us of. We, uh, you should have received a Google, uh, an invitation to join a Google Doc um, or have access to the Google Doc for meeting notes. This is meant primarily for the um, organizing committee and NHGRI, but everyone, um, who, all the participants can have read and comment a um, access to, to this document. Um, the Capital Consulting Corporation staff is on site. If you have any questions, we'll be receiving box dinners um, delivered late this afternoon. If you haven't ordered one um, during the coffee break, you can go upstairs and there's um, a cafe open and you can pick up some, some snacks for later. We'll have a shuttle today um, at the end of the session going to, back to the hotel at 9 and then picking you up again, sorry it's early tomorrow morning at 7 in order to get you through security and get coffee and some, some breakfast. Um, you should order your transportation to the airport either through the hotel or see the Capital Consulting Corporation staff before lunchtime tomorrow to si sign up. And please don't forget to send your reimbursement vouchers to the um, capital consulting by the end of March. So on that uh, note, I guess, um, Mike, do I have time for if there are any questions? Um, anyone have any questions? Not, I think I'm probably just going to turn it over to Ewan. Um, it's going to give the next talk so we can get back on schedule. So it is really a pleasure to invite Ewan back to the ENCODE uh, discussion. And um, we've asked him to give a talk on uh, defining the scientific questions, really setting the stage for the, um, the rest of the, the workshop. Okay. So, thank you.